Welcome to the Emily the Mystic Show. You're about to walk through a portal that leads to all things mystical, magical, spiritual, and supernatural. I'm your host, Emily. I'm a spiritual mentor and Akashic Records practitioner and teacher, an intuition development coach, and a galactic channeler. If you're an old soul on a self-discovery and healing journey, you are in the right place. We'll be diving in deep to some of my favorite mystical topics, including manifestation, past lives, the spirit world, energy, and so much more. Get ready to embrace your inner mystic and live your most authentic life possible. The portal is now open. And today's portal, my friend, is a very cosmic and galactic one. I hope you're just as excited as I am for this episode because we're diving into another really important part of the Emily the Mystic story, which is my starseed story. We're going to be diving into what it means to be a starseed today and how that journey has unfolded for me both personally and in my business as well, and how you can get to know yourself even better at a soul level by understanding your cosmic and galactic origins. Of course, I introduce myself in the intro of this podcast as being a galactic channel, and so I have to give you all of the juicy details about what that means to me and how this work has unfolded in my own life. If I had told you back in 2018 that I would be channeling galactic beings, I would have run away or laughed in your face or been like, what are you talking about? Because that topic was so outside of my realm of consciousness at the time. But now it's part of my day-to-day life. And being a starseed is part of my normal daily human vocabulary, as I hope it will be for you too after listening to this episode. And so I can't wait to introduce you to this topic, whether this is brand new for you and you're hearing about it for the first time, or you're well-versed in your own starseed origins and your own soul's history story. This is such a fun thing to talk about, and I hope you enjoy it. As always, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This topic for some of you may be very activating. It may be very esoteric and may be completely brand new to you. And I understand if that's the case, but I want you to be open to the possibility of the fact that you are drawn to this podcast in the first place and my work, and that what I'm about to share with you in this episode may open up a whole new world for you a whole new journey of getting to know yourself. And that could lead you down a whole new path in your life. So I can't wait for you to learn more about this journey. So we are going to start by defining what it means to be a starseed. And then I'm going to dive into my own story of how I discovered my own starseed origins. So being a starseed. It's a bit of a loaded term in the spiritual community. I find that either you don't know what the heck this is, if you're spiritual, you have no idea what it is to be a starseed, or you're super into it. You surround yourself with tons of starseed information. You follow all of the people on YouTube who do this sort of work. So you're kind of either on one end of the spectrum or the other. It's sort of hard to find that middle place, that in-between. So wherever you are on your own starseed journey, let's break it down and define what it means. So being a starseed means that your soul is not originally from planet Earth. Now, if you listen to episode four, where I dive into my Akashic Records journey, you will have learned about reincarnation and past lives. So I want you to consider for a moment the possibility that your soul may not have originated here on this planet. Your soul may have originated somewhere else (laughs) in this universe. And now before you leave your body and run away from this conversation, I want you to invite you to the idea that if your soul is not from this planet, what would that mean for you? Would that mean that you are an ancient old soul who has a lifetimes 
of experience before this one, would that mean that you are actually possibly an alien being from another place? And for those of you who love your fantasy movies and novels, maybe that is a really cool idea for you. And maybe that helps you see yourself in a totally different light that, oh, wow, maybe I am here for a greater purpose on this planet than I first originally gave myself credit for. And wouldn't it be interesting if I were to take a look and see what that means for me? So being a star seed is this overarching topic of understanding that your soul is not just from here on this planet and that you originated somewhere else in another star system, another planet, and from there have had other lives in other star systems elsewhere, both in the Milky Way galaxy and in other galaxies in our universe. And eventually your soul made its way here to planet Earth for what we call your starseed mission and purpose, which is really the crux of why you're here at this moment in time. Planet Earth is going through a massive evolution and ascension journey, which I've touched on a bit in all of the episodes so far. And what you really need to know about that is our planet is going through massive change. Mother Earth is rapidly shifting and changing and evolving. And that is because of us human beings whose evolution is changing very rapidly, both good and bad. Obviously, there's a lot of chaos and turmoil and challenging things going on on our planet right now. And also, there are many of us, myself included, who are dedicated to the mission of turning this planet around Maybe not necessarily in this lifetime, but our impact and our legacy that we leave behind will impact generations and generations and generations to come. So being a starseed means waking up to that bigger mission and purpose on this planet and knowing that your energy, your vibration, who you be is impacting the world around you so much more than you know, no matter where you live in the world. Your energetic frequency has the ability to transverse time and space and to be able to impact our collective and to help. The more, the more of us that wake up, the more that the consciousness of the planet continues to rise. The vibration of this planet continues to rise. And the more that that happens, the better the results that we're going to see. We're eventually moving into what we as channelers and spiritual people like to call the new earth. Now, the new earth is something that is likely not going to happen in this lifetime. It may happen in hundreds of years down the road. That's not to scare you, but it is to say that we're at a very pivotal moment in earth's history where we can either go backwards or go forwards. And for those of us who are committed to going forwards, we are here to literally (laughs) change and shape the planet and help it to evolve and grow and ascend into this new earth timeline, this new earth frequency, where things are going to be different. There's going to be more love on the planet and less fear. That is the ultimate goal, is to help our planet shift from being in a vibration of fear and suffering into a state of unconditional love for self and other. So anyway, that's a grand overarching theme of what this episode is all about. Now, how did I learn about being a starseed? Where did this come from? How did this evolve for me in my own journey? I started seeing when I was in the midst of my spiritual reawakening journey, I started seeing information about being a starseed out there on the internet pretty frequently here and there, I started noticing the word and it really piqued my curiosity and I wanted to learn more about it. So I started diving into a little bit of my own research, reading as many articles and blogs as I could, started listening to other podcast episodes about this topic. And when I learned about it, it was like another light switch turned on for me. I've been talking about that a lot throughout the course of this podcast so far. I've sort of had all these different light bulb moments where I've really come into an awareness point about something about myself as a soul, and it has really hit home for me. And being a starseed is one of those things that has been so pivotal in understanding myself better at a soul level. 
So as you learned in episode one, during my childhood, I often felt very misunderstood and very much like I was on the outside looking in a lot of the time. I shared that I am a very was a very creative child who really liked to dance to the beat of her own drum and try different things. And going to a Catholic school, I have often felt very misunderstood and different and kind of eccentric a little bit compared to the other kids. And I always felt like I was in the friend group, but also kind of like an alien in the friend group. Like, yes, I feel connected to my friends, but I also feel so different than them. And I couldn't put my finger on why. And then when I learned about being a starseed, it all made sense for me and helped me understand why I felt like such an outsider from a very young age. Because being a starseed means that you, your soul is from other places within our universe. And so this planet, planet Earth, is not your natural home. This is not your home. This is not where you had your formative soul's experiences or your first hundred lifetimes. Planet Earth has come along for you further along, kind of in the middle age point of your soul's overall journey. When you reach planet Earth, if you're a starseed coming from somewhere else, you don't come here necessarily as a young soul. We're actually starting to see more young souls come in now and start to um, incarnate here now. But if you were born in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you are an older soul in terms of your soul's overall evolution and journey. And you typically come to planet Earth as a, a mission along your range of lifetimes that you've had further along, like I was saying, around kind of the middle age point in your soul's soul's overall overarching journey. And so this planet is not for the faint of heart, obviously. There's a lot going on here. It makes this planet very chaotic and very challenging. And of course, being in a human body is its own whole experience. And so this planet may make you feel very lost, very confused. It may feel like it's a very hard time being here for a lot of you. And I definitely felt that way. I felt like I never quite was at home. I had, I I share this in episode one, I had a lovely childhood with a wonderful childhood home and loving parents and all of these things. I was very blessed in a lot of ways. And yet I never felt fully like I resonated with my hometown or where I was from. And I couldn't put my finger on why. I always felt a little lost. And so coming into my starseed awareness and knowing that term really just helped me understand, okay, if I'm not here, from here, if I'm not from this planet, then I understand why I have felt different, misunderstood, lost, lonely, isolated, and homesick for a lot of my life. And now coming into it and being aware of it and then meeting other people who resonate with being a starseed is like a homecoming because I feel like I've been able to find my soul tribe along that journey. And I hope listening to this episode, and maybe you're having some awarenesses about yourself and some activations about yourself while you listen to this, hopefully you will start to see yourself in my journey and feel more at home in my community. And here in my work, here in the Emily the Mystic world, knowing that you're not alone in feeling that way. And you're not alone for feeling different. And you're not alone for feeling unique. And so for me, I started to really dive more deeply into that starseed journey. And what's really interesting is that I had learned about it through doing my own research. And then I told you in episode four that I dove into the Akashic Records headfirst and started doing Akashic Records readings. And what's really interesting is that a side note here The Akashic Records program that I went through originally did not teach at all on galactic and star origins. So I didn't know anything really about this topic from that perspective of the Akashic Records program that I went through. But I had people 
messaging me, asking me for Akashic Records readings specifically for Galactic and Star Origins. And it was really surprising to me because I didn't specialize in this work at all at that time. I had done my own personal research. I hadn't been taught how to to do galactic and star origin readings for clients in my Akashic Records training. So it was kind of funny that I had people coming out of the woodwork to ask me for such a specific type of reading. By the way, the Akashic Records are so multidimensional, like I was saying before. There's so many different things that we can cover in an Akashic Records reading. And Galactic Origins is just one tiny fragment of work. So the fact that people were coming to me and asking for that specifically, I was kind of like, huh, isn't that interesting? And really led me down a journey of soul discovery and discovery in my own work to figure this out and learn how to do galactic readings for the clients who are asking for them. So what did I do? I created a body of work that is now on my YouTube channel for free where I started interviewing different cosmic and galactic beings, higher dimensional beings, who are connected to some of the different star systems that we as human beings can have had lifetimes in. And I started this body of work on YouTube where I began channeling, so bringing in and talking to the consciousness of these different groups of beings and learning about them and feeling the difference in their energy frequencies in my body and getting to know their personality traits, their likes, their dislikes, characteristics, lessons that they're meant to learn here on this planet. And that journey of interviewing all of these different groups was so profound because it really taught me from the inside out how to recognize those energetic profiles in my own clients. I've probably interviewed at least 25 different galactic groups at this point. You can go over and check out my YouTube channel, Emily the Mystic, to watch all the different videos that I have created because they are so fun to watch and you may discover more about yourself in those videos. But before we get there, and I'm going to talk about how to find your cosmic and galactic origins in just a bit, but before we do... I want to tap into a little bit more about why this is so important and kind of the history behind all of this and where it came from. So our origins as at a conscious level began when divine source, God consciousness, decided that it had limitations and decided that it was time to get to know itself better and be on a journey of knowledge and understanding itself. And so when that happened, at that moment in time, some people, some scientists refer to it as the Big Bang, divine source consciousness split off into all of these fragments of light. Of course, we know them now as to be stars (laughs) and different bodies within our universe, planets, all of these different things that we have. And each planet, each system of stars has its own consciousness, has its own energetic frequency. And from there, planets and stars split off fragmented into individual beings, individual souls, group and groups of souls as well, which split off into, again, individual beings. And so with each star system comes a different type of consciousness, comes a different type of energy frequency, comes different types of personality traits, and each star system that exists within our universe, wherever you are from, has its own type of civilization, has its own type of knowledge, has its own type of experiences, good and bad. Conflict doesn't just exist here on planet Earth. It also exists in our universe as well. And we live in a universe of polarity, both light and dark. We've talked about that in a bunch of different episodes so far. And so within our universe, we have benevolent, extraterrestrial, alien beings, if you want to use those words, galactic beings. And we also have malevolent galactic beings as well. And again, because we have to have the polarity of both light and dark. And so for you, what's really interesting is that, and I think this is a big misconception in the spiritual industry in general, we often think that we're from just one star system where we've spent most of our lives. 
No, you're actually a galactic melting pot of lots of different star systems throughout time. Maybe you've had 100 lives over here and 100 lives in this star system, and all of those have combined to form your cosmic and galactic DNA that you carry into this lifetime. So what a lot of spiritual seekers like to say, and I have this understanding as well, is that our human DNA that we carry, our DNA strand, we know that a lot of scientists refer to portions of our DNA as being junk DNA, when in reality, that's actually extraterrestrial DNA. You know, for some of you, that may sound nuts, but that's what we believe, and that our junk DNA is not actually junk DNA, it is sacred. And that when we awaken up to this possibility that your soul is not just from here, from this planet, you awaken up to the possibility that your DNA can be activated and can help you understand who you are and who you came here to be. This process, this awakening process, literally turns on those junk DNA strands (laughs) and helps you reconnect with and remember who you really are. And so let's say you've had hundreds of lives in other star systems. At some point along your journey, you are called to go on a mission to come here to planet Earth because planet Earth has always been a bit of a problem planet. It has always had challenges because it is a third dimensional planet, meaning we have physical life here. And that physical life, when we live in a universe of polarity, can create a lot of physical conflict. And so coming here to this planet was a mission for you to help the planet change and grow and evolve. So some of you may have started coming here during ancient civilizations, during ancient Atlantis, for example, or ancient Lumeria. Those were civilizations that, yes, did exist. They exist in our collective consciousness for a reason. They are not made up. No one created the story about them. They were real. That's why we have history about them. That's why there are stories about them, because they really did happen at some point in time. And those were failed experiments. They were failed opportunities to combine higher dimensional groups with the third dimensional frequency here on this planet that went horribly wrong. Again, chaos, challenge, conflict. So ancient Atlantis was a no-go and was terminated As we all know, ancient Atlantis was flooded and destroyed. Same with ancient Lumeria. And from there, other ancient civilizations began to crop up, like the Sumerian civilization, the Babylonian civilization, the Egyptian civilization, and so many other ancient civilizations from there that eventually grew and changed and developed with time and hundreds of years into where we are today at this moment in time in 2024. And so, like I was saying before, we are at a pivotal turning point in planet Earth's history where we have the opportunity to either evolve and grow or not. And so it is up to us whether or not we want to shift our consciousness and be open to the possibility that there is more out there and to the possibility that we are greater than we give ourselves credit for, that our souls have had lifetimes of experience and knowledge and ancient wisdom before this one. And so if you resonate with that, congratulations. Welcome to the tribe. (laughs) Welcome to this really powerful understanding of yourself and your soul. And I'm so excited that I was able to give you that gift of soul knowledge and wisdom today. So what I want to talk about next is some of the different characteristics for some of the main galactic groups, especially the ones that I work with the most frequently and the ones that I channel for my clients. So if you come to an Akashic Records reading with me, the first thing we go over are your galactic origins, if you're open to it. I always ask my clients if they're open to hearing about them, and if they say yes, then we dive into it. So what I do is I channel in the Akashic Records information about where your soul has had lifetimes before this one here on this planet. And I have come to discover that we have usually one point of origin where our soul originally 
kind of spawned into existence. And then other places in our universe where we've spent lifetimes after that. Typically, I do one main point of origin and two uh, subsequent places where we've spent a lot of lives. So here are some of the ones that I see a lot in my clients. So first of all, we have the blueprinters. So the blueprinters are a group of consciousness and one of the first ever groups of souls that existed again at the beginning of time when divine source consciousness decided to get to know itself. This group is called, again, the blueprinters. They began their journey in the Andromeda galaxy within the Andromeda constellation. The blueprinters contain and knew and were a group of consciousness that had and carried the templates and codes and blueprints for conscious life, for what it means to live in a civilization, for what it means to think and be a sentient being. That's what the blueprinters hold the codes for. And they carry those etheric energetic codes and cosmic templates throughout their soul's experience and journey. So the blueprinters are one of the oldest groups. Blueprinter souls, I am a blueprinter soul, so that's why I'm starting with them. This is my home soul group of origin. Blueprinter souls are ancient souls. They've had thousands and thousands and thousands of incarnations. So if you resonate with this, you are a super old soul. (laughs) This is not your first time around the block. You may actually feel very tired with the amount of lives that you've had, and you may reach have reached this point in your earthly incarnation, and you may just feel very exhausted (laughs) and fatigued with what you've been through uh, throughout your soul's history. You may really struggle here on planet Earth because of all the atrocities going on here. And you may see this planet as just being a difficult place to live because it's so far off from the original cosmic blueprints and templates that the blueprinters carry. So for you, part of your purpose is to really awaken to what it means to be alive to enjoy the purpose of conscious sentient life, which is simply to be. So you are here to help awaken others to their divine potential, to what it means to have a purpose, to be purposeful, and what it means to love and to love others. You are meant to have it all, enjoy it all, experience it all, and then some because you know the blueprints for what it means to be living and to enjoy life. So the blueprinters are this very ancient, ancient group. Again, I tend to attract a lot of clients from this soul group because that is my home group of origin. And from there, I want to talk about some other uh, common groups that exist out there that we talk about a lot in the spiritual community. So next, we have the Arcturians. The Arcturians are a very high dimensional, high frequency group. Sometimes if you're new to working with them, it can be difficult to work with them because they're such a high vibration. It can take time to really calibrate to their frequency. Arcturian starseeds are extraordinary healers. They are excellent at being connected to divine source consciousness and to a higher frequency. They are very, very good at being spiritual. (laughs) It's just natural for them. Arcturian starseeds are have always felt connected to God, source consciousness. I would say most starseed groups in here do. Some tend to struggle with human life more than others. And we'll get into that for each group as we go along. But the Arcturians are this very cerebral group. They kind of tend to think and operate from the head versus the heart. They're very connected to logic efficiency, intelligence, and they really like to see life through the lens of simplifying complicated information in order to make it easier to understand. So Arcturian starseeds are going to be your masters of technology, coding, systems. They are also always going to be lifelong learners, wanting to learn and grow and understand the world and study. They're constantly studying and learning new things. They're teaching. They love to teach things. 
Arcturians need to connect more with their emotions because they're so involved in the head. They tend to get distracted by what's going on in their head and have a hard time operating from their heart because they're so focused on learning and what they every everything that they have going on. Next, we have the Andromedans. So the Andromedans are from the Andromeda star system. They are different than the blue printers. Even though the Andromeda galaxy is within the Andromeda star system, there is a difference in the frequency of these groups. The Andromedan beings came later than the blue printers. So the Andromedan beings are master manifestors. They are excellent at creating things. These beings are so creation-driven. They are really great at being a visionary and dreaming up new ideas, dreaming a whole new world into being. They tend to be very just actively involved in creating and building things. They have a really hard time sitting still because they constantly want to be working on something and bringing something into physical form. Andromedan starseeds really value beautiful things. They're very visual. These are very visual beings. They like having and living in a beautiful home. They like having beautiful things. They like imagining things. They often live life in sort of that dreamy place within their head, within their mind's eye. They are also very connected to energy of peace. They are harmonizers. They love to live life in balance. They are really great at bringing groups together, connecting people together, and they're really good at bringing peace and mediating conflict within a group setting. And they're very connected to plants and animals as well. They're very much the calm in the midst of a chaotic situation. They help kind of ease and soothe the people around them. So animals and children love them because they kind of have this soothing, calming energy. Even though they're busy, they tend to be busy people, (laughs) but they still have this way of always feeling like they have a calm head no matter what's happening. Next, we have the Syrian beings. So Syrian beings are very connected to the human body more than other starseed groups. They are the most grounded out of all the starseed groups. They are the most connected to their emotions compared to other starseed groups, so they can be very emotional and very sensitive. They find it very easy to be in this human body. Some of the other groups, like the Arcturians, can struggle a bit to be in a a human body. The Blue Avians can struggle to be in a human body. The Syrians, because the Syrian form is physical, uh, very similar to the human form, it's easier for Syrian starseeds to come here and incarnate than it is for other types of starseeds. They also are very connected to nature and the outdoors. So Syrians in general love being outside. They love being connected to water. They love being connected to Mother Earth, this planet, the mountains. They love to be outside. They love to help Mother Earth. So a lot of Syrian starseeds are going to be very involved in changing this planet through recycling and conservation and clean energy and fighting against climate change and are very passionate about ecology and helping this planet. Again, they're very connected to the body. So Syrian starseeds tend to be great at keeping the body in good form. So in good shape, they're very connected to health. They're very connected to making sure the physical body is at peak health, whether that be through fitness or other practices. So those are the Syrians. Next, we have the Pleiadians. So the Pleiadians are a group very similar to Aquarius energy. They are revolutionary. They are change makers. They like to shake things up. They like to do things differently. The Pleiadians can also be very fun-loving and jovial and joyful. 
They like to have fun. They like to have a good time. They love doing exciting things, trying new things. They are also really big on making life easier. Pleiadians want to enjoy their life. So if they can come up with something that's going to help them live life better, they will do it. They will find a fun solution to a complicated problem. They are really great at that. They are really great with technology. They are really great with people. They're very char- they tend to be very charismatic. They tend to kind of attract groups of people and always kind of have a community around them. They really don't like conflict and they really don't like being around people who drag their energy down. The Pleiadian is always just kind of in this natural, optimistic, high vibe state of being. And they want other people to live from that place. So they're always like, how can we make the world a better place? How can we make it better? How can we change things? How can we evolve faster, faster, faster? They're very focused on growth and self and self growth. So those are the Pleiadians. Next, we have the Lyrans. So the Lyran civilization is also one of the oldest civilizations out there in terms of our galactic history. Lyran beings are the courageous, very brave souls of the different starseed groups. They're very similar to Gryffindor energy. If you think about the Harry Potter series, they are, Lyran souls are Gryffindor energy to a T. They are very wise. They are also master builders. So they are great at building things. And again, similar to the Andromedans, great at bringing new things into physical form. But the difference is that the Lyrans are a bit more divine masculine, whereas the Andromedans are more divine feminine. So we kind of tend to think about strength and bravery and providership and taking care of others and holding that divine masculine space. That's sort of what the Lyrans tend to do. Now, that's an energy frequency. That's not a gender identity. So all of us here, human beings, we have both masculine and feminine energy frequencies within us. So you can be Lyran and you can be a female identifying human being. So just wanted to clarify that as well. And also we have the Blue Avians. So the Blue Avians were part of the Lyra Society they were avian species, so they were bird-like beings. I should back up a second and say the Lyran beings were feline, cat-like, lion-like beings. So the blue avian beings were bird-like beings. They had wings. So blue avian star seeds tend to really struggle with being in a human body because they don't know what it feels like to be in a physical form without wings. It's very uncomfortable for them. So blue avian star seeds really value freedom. They have a hard time being tied down. They don't like being stuck in any one particular place for a long period of time. They would prefer to flit around, try new things. And it's easier for them to kind of live life from the point of trying lots of different things versus getting super involved in deep in one singular specific thing. And again, they can't be tied down. They really value freedom and their own freedom. So those are the blue avians. And then finally, the last group that I want to introduce you to today are the Mintuckans. So Mintucka is another ancient star system that was a very aquatic star system where they're was not a lot of land mass, but a lot of water. So most Mintuckan beings were aquatic beings. So when you think about mermaid species, we automatically think about the Mintuckans. The Mintuckan beings, and if you resonate with being one, are very high vibrational and playful. They tend to be more childlike than any of the other groups. They tend to be very involved in things that are just more fun and playful. And they don't, Mintuckan starseeds are not serious at all. They have a really hard time being serious. It's easier for them to play and have fun and bring that energy of playfulness into everything that they do. That's also here, what they're here to do is to inspire others to live life through play and joy. 
And because they're so connected to the water, Mintuck and Starseeds have to either live near the water or visit it or travel to it a couple of times a year because that is part of their own star system. That's part of where they're from. So that is a little bit of information for you about some of the different starseed groups. Perhaps you saw yourself in one or a few of them. There are a lot of groups out there, and that is not an all-inclusive list, by the way. So if you're curious about your own galactic origins and want to discover them for yourself, I have a couple of ideas for you. Number one, of course, you can book an Akashic Records Soul Guidance reading with me. I will leave a link to that below in the show notes. And at the beginning of your reading, we will dive into your galactic origins, your history as a starseed soul, and also your mission and purpose for what you're supposed to do here on this planet, what that looks like for you. Now, that's the fastest and easiest way to learn your origins. If you want to be on a self-paced journey of discovery, what you can do is head over to my YouTube channel and start searching these different galactic groups. I have a whole playlist called Cosmic Connections. What you can do is you can start watching all those different videos, learning about each group, and the ones that you feel drawn the most to are the ones that you have spent time in as a starseed soul. So that's kind of how you can discover your starseed mix is through watching those videos and following the ones that resonate with you and taking that with you as being part of your own cosmic and galactic DNA. And finally, I am so excited to announce, and this podcast episode couldn't come at a better time because it is time for me to embark on a whole new galactic expansion within my business and invite you into a very sacred mentorship experience unlike any I've ever done before That is called the Star Warrior Tribe Experience. This is an eight-week cosmic and galactic mentorship for starseeds and new earth leaders who want to grow deeper in their mission and impact on this planet and change their community as a whole, while also opening up, expanding, and upgrading their psychic, intuitive, and galactic channeling gifts. This is an eight-week fully channeled mentorship. What does that mean? That means each week we show up together as a group, and I am going to live channel different groups with messages, upgrades, activations, and energy work, depending on what the unique needs of the group are. So we could be focusing really heavily on purpose. We could be focusing heavily on money. We could be focusing heavily on love and relationships. I don't know because it's going to depend on what the unique needs of the group are and who joins that container. So I'm going to be bringing through all the different groups that I spoke about during this podcast episode, as well as many others that I work with that we just didn't have time to get into here. And it's going to be such a unique, fun, and different experience, unlike anything you have ever done before, I have done before. I have been leading a light language mentorship for the last month now, and most of the content in there has been channeled live in the moment. And the women in that container keep telling me it is the best investment they've ever made. It is the best thing they've ever done for themselves. And I was so guided to take that experience and create a whole eight-week experience, a whole eight-week group mentorship focused around channeled live information with energetic shifts and changes that you're going to start seeing in your reality very, very quickly. This work is next level. It is cosmic. It is galactic. It is unlike anything I could possibly, you know, explain in human words. You have to really be there to experience it, to experience the magic. You'll get a taste of it while you watch my YouTube channel and some of the different Cosmic Connections videos that I have done. I also have a whole series on YouTube called My Galactic Guidance Series. All of those videos are live channeled where I share different messages with you from different groups like the ones we talked about today. So that can give you a preview into this experience, the Star Warrior Tribe experience. 
And I want to introduce that concept of being a star warrior. Now, this is not taken from the Star Wars movies, although I have to say that Star Wars is actually a historical recollection of galactic wars that have happened off of this planet. And so anyway, that's a side note, side point. But the Star Warrior tribe experience, the reason why I'm calling it that is because it's meant to help activate your new Earth leader archetype, your warrior archetype. So when you're activated into your new Earth leader archetype, regardless of what your profession is, whether you are a stay-at-home mom, a corporate professional, a fitness trainer, a massage therapist, an entrepreneur, Whatever your job is, whatever you do for a living, it doesn't matter because you are already a leader. You're already being called to step up to lead this planet in your community, regardless of what you're doing for a living. You are still influencing your community as a whole through your energetic frequency. And by stepping into your new earth leader archetype and your warrior archetype, We're literally going to be cutting away and clearing lifetimes of matrix programming, lifetimes of negative conditioning and programming that has distorted the truth of who you really are. And so in this mentorship, we're going to be activating you to the highest vibration of truth of who you are as a soul. And it is going to be so life-changing and so fun for anyone who chooses to step into this mentorship. And by the way, I forgot to mention this throughout the course of the podcast, but just a quick side note here. This work, this galactic work, for some people, they associate it, I don't know why, what the heck this, where the heck this came from. Some people associate it with politics, and apparently there, there is a whole spectrum of political belief that is associated with galactic connections. And that is not what this is, by the way. All of this is pure live channeled from the frequency of unconditional love. I do not have any political affiliations. <laughs> I do not even worry or think about politics. That is not my purpose. That is not part of my work. My work is to be a leader, to help lead you and to help lead others in my community to discovering your truth, your sacred truth, whatever that means for you. So I hope that if all of this content in this podcast episode inspired you, that you will join us in the Star Warrior Tribe. We're going to begin in April of 2024. So if you're listening to this podcast before April of 2024, make sure you check out the link below in the show notes for more information about this mentorship experience because it is going to be incredible and you are not going to regret it. And we are going to have so much fun. So I would love to have you in the tribe and I would love to help guide you into your next evolution of growth as a new earth leader. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. Whatever you think your starseed origins are, I see you as a galactic being of light and I thank you for being a volunteer here, for being a galactic being on this planet and holding the frequency of your unique mission and purpose. This is not easy work, and I am so glad that you are here. Thank you for being alive. Thank you for coming to this planet. From my heart to yours, I see you. I want you to feel that energy that I'm sending you, that love that I'm sending you right now. And I'll see you, my friend, in the next episode. Bye for now. The portal is now closed. Thank you so much for listening. I invite you to join our community of mystics and spiritual seekers in my Emily the Mystic membership for more content, support, and fun just like this episode. You can check that out on my website, emilythemystic.com slash membership. Don't forget to send this podcast episode to a friend who needs to hear it rate the show wherever you listen to your podcasts and follow along on my Instagram and YouTube at Emily the Mystic. Don't worry, the portal will open again soon. See you then.